Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Jim and this video is about the Unreal Engine base classes. So here we are in Unreal Engine and if I right click in the content browser and select Blueprint class, I get a window to pick a new Blueprint class. And I'm sure many of you seen this window before at some point, but maybe haven't really explored what any of these classes mean or maybe you're even using them in the wrong way as not as intended. So the purpose of this video is to go through a few of the major classes and talk through what the functionality is. The first class we'll discuss is an object. And this is the base class in Unreal Engine that all other objects are derived from. So everything pretty much in Unreal Engine derives from object. Now objects can be useful in some situations, but they are very limited on what they can do. They cannot be spawned or placed into the world. They can't be attached to, to other actors. So they have very limited functionality. And in Unreal Engine, I have a BP object that has a parent class of object. And as we can see, the class defaults is empty and class settings doesn't have a lot of functionality that we could adjust. And when we add, we can only add functions, variables, macros. We can't add other components to this. The actor class is the next one. This derives from the object class, and this can be placed or spawned into a world, and it can also contain other components. So this really is the base class that you're gonna be using for a lot of things, or at least everything what we're, that you're gonna use is gonna derive from actor, most likely. And here I am back in Unreal Engine. I have my BP actor that I created that is a parent class actor. And we can see that we do have the ability to add components. We also can add functions, variables, all those other things. In addition, we can see all of our class defaults, a lot of which are actor specific that we didn't have access to in our object class. The next class we'll talk about is the pawn class. This derives from the actor class and it can be possessed by a controller, an AI controller or a player controller. And here I am back in Unreal Engine. And as you can see, we have all of the functionality of an actor, but we also have these pawn settings that we can set in our class defaults that say which AI would control it when it's placed in a world, should the AI take control? So all of these types of things that are specific to a pawn. The next class is a character class. This derives from the pawn class, and it really is just a pawn with some extra added components that are available right off the bat. So we have a capsule, an arrow, a mesh, and a movement component. And here in Unreal Engine, we can see that if we make a BP character, here we have capsule, arrow, mesh. This is a placeholder, so you can add your mesh to your character. And then the character movement component which is a pre-built component in Unreal Engine that has a lot of al already scripted things for movement for your character. Now, when you're creating your game, if you don't need some of this functionality, you can use a pawn as your character. Uh, if it's something that is gonna be the main character of my game, I will usually use the character as the base class. So we talked about the movement component that was on our character. So what is a component? Well, there's scene components, actor components, lighting components. The two main ones you'll use are scene component and actor component. It is basically just a piece of pre-built functionality that can be added to a scene or actor. So it's a reusable block of code uh, that can hold variables, functions, dispatchers, those types of things. Common uses are for attributes like a health component, a stamina component. You may also use it for like an inventory component so that you can attach that to multiple actors and have that pre-built functionality already there. And here in Unreal Engine, I have my BP component, which I made, which is a child of actor component. And we see here that there's really not much to it. It just has a place for you to add some functions, variables, those types of things. The next class I wanna talk about and arguably the most misused or underused class is the player controller class. Now a player controller is an interface between a player and a pawn. You may in your code have accessed get player controller, those types of things. Um, it is persistent throughout a level and it is assigned by the game mode. So if you don't 
select one specifically for a level, it will assign the base one for that game mode. And here I am in Unreal Engine. I have BP controller that I created and you can see that we can have variables, functions, those types of things. But typically uh, what you would wanna use is have one controller for each type of play that you're gonna have. So a good example would be if you have a game that has a lobby where you can walk around and do various functionality, you may have a controller for that lobby that only gives access to the player to things that they're gonna need in that lobby. For instance, if they can't fight in a lobby, you wouldn't put those types of things in there. Then you could have another player controller that's set up for battle or for your different game modes that would have the functionality necessary for that level. And speaking of game mode, that is the next class that we'll talk about. So the game mode governs the rules of gameplay. I like to think of it as like the referee in a sports game, or if you're familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, it would be the dungeon master. It's basically the entity that's making sure that all of the players and all of the different functionality is being followed and that nobody's breaking the rules. A game mode is assigned to a level and it is instantiated when that level is initialized. So once you load a level, you cannot change the game mode in that level as long as that level is loaded. If you were to leave the level and go back in, the game mode basically is reinstantiated and starts over from scratch. And a final note, for multiplayer games, the game mode is instanced only on the server and never on the client. This isn't really relevant to single player games, but if you are making a multiplayer game, it is good to know that this exists only on the server. And here I am in Unreal Engine and I have my BP game mode open. And you can see under class defaults, we can set a lot of the other base classes that exist for this specific game mode. So game state, player controller, player state, the default pawn class, all of these things can be set in each individual game mode that you use. And similar to the player controller, because each level has its own game mode, you can program functionality that it's necessary for that level. So your lobby level may not have some of the functionality needed for a game, or if you have certain maps that are only deathmatch or only capture the flag or things like that, you can create a game mode that is specific to that type of game. The next class is the game instance. And one important thing to know about this is that there is a new instance every time you launch the game. So the game instance is spawned when you launch the game and it remains persistent until that game instance is shut down. So every time you launch in the Unreal Editor, you're getting a new instance or every time you launch from your built game, be it an EXE file or you're launching it from Steam or some other platform, a new game instance is created every time you launch it. And the game instance is commonly used to control data that needs to be passed between levels. So if you have information that is stored in the game mode, once you load a new level, all of that information will basically be thrown away. So you may want to save that to a game instance or some other place within the game instance so that you can pass it between levels. And here I am in Unreal Engine and I have BP game instance created. And as you can see, there's not really a lot here. It's pretty blank. However, we do have the ability to add functions and variables within the game instance that we may use for creating functionality. And the final one I'll talk about is the level blueprint. So you can program any functionality within a level that it otherwise does not fall under any other class. So if you have information that you want in a level that you don't necessarily want to be tracked by the game mode or another place, then you would put that in the level blueprint. A couple additional notes is that it contains the mechanisms for level streaming and the sequencer, which is used for cinematics. And also you can reference any actor that's in a level through the level blueprint. So this is a unique feature of the level blueprint. And here I am back in Unreal Engine. And in this level, you can see that I have created this static mesh cube. I've called it cube static mesh. Now, normally you wouldn't be able to gain access to this directly, but if we go to our level blueprint, you can see that I can create a reference directly to that static mesh. And just to show you that's the one, we can change it, the name of this to something like QB, QB boy. And when we recompile our level blueprint, it also updated the name. So we are referencing that actor that's in the level.
There are two more classes that I wanted to talk about that are specific just to networking games or multiplayer games. Now that's not to say that you couldn't use them in a single player game, but the functionality exists in other places, so it'd be redundant in a lot of cases. The first one is the player state. A player state is created for every player on the server. It also technically is created in a standalone game, but you wouldn't necessarily need to use this class because you can gain access to that through other ways. And the player state class would contain relevant information about that player that can be used by other players or by the server to reference that data. Some examples may be the username or that player's score could be referenced through the player state. And the final one, again, only really necessary for multiplayer games is the game state. It manages the game's global state. Typically it's only used for network games. Otherwise it's redundant with the game mode. It is spawned by the game mode. And one thing to note for this, in a multiplayer game or a network game, it exists on the server and then is replicated to each client. So you could use this to have each client track certain data versus having each one of them have to reference the game mode constantly. And that finishes up this lesson on the Unreal Engine base classes. I hope you learned something and I hope this video will help you become a better Unreal Engine developer. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a note in the comments and thank you for watching.